My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends, just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Yes, we're consumed by social unrest and the gruesome pictures from around the nation. We're shocked that the peaceful protesters have created an opening for looters, and the police sometimes can't tell the difference between the two. Even from a purely business perspective, you'd think people smashing up major retail destinations like the flagship Macy's in Harold Square would be bad for the stock market, right? Yet every time the market looks like it's about to get clocked, we get a stay of execution. Witness today's action. Dow gained 268 points. That's a peak climb, 0.82%. NASDAQ advanced 0.59%. Last night after President Trump's fire and brimstone law and order speech, our futures plummeted. A declaration of war replete with the threatened deployment of the U.S. Army. That's not the job. They're war fighters. Makes you want to sell stocks for certain, and those futures looked ugly. And all those images of looting sure didn't help. The future stayed soft. Then I got up at 3.15 a.m. and spec the pre-carnage. Futures have rallied to you. An hour and a half later, the futures were up nicely. You know what counteracted the paroxysms of pain? A 4% rally in the German stock market, with several of their forces not far behind. Yes, we actually sat to the tune of the German market. Yep, I've been watching the rest of the world. Many of these countries are flashing bright green now. We don't talk about it enough. I am saying that the possibility of an aggressive stimulus in Europe, including the penny-pinching German government, where they seem to be falling all over themselves to resurrect their economy by any means necessary, is moving our stock market. I'm talking about the incredible turn in China, which just had an astounding 11% gain in auto sales. That's gigantic for the world's economies. Surge in iron. Have a copper. The latter, which 11 week high. That's huge because copper is a tremendous barometer of global economic activity. The biggest market in the world for copper is China. If the rest of the world's in better shape, well, that is fantastic news for our companies that do lots of business overseas. And you know what? It absolutely overshadows what's happening here. The implications of China's recovery in particular are enormous. First, we may have a, having a real trade dispute at the highest levels, but it hasn't really trickled down to many American businesses. But there was a bit of an uproar today about Apple slicing prices for new phones ahead of one of China's com- communist-mandated shopping holidays. I say, hold your horses. The last time Apple cut prices took a massive amount of market share, ended up beating the sales estimates for the street. Could be happening again. Other than CEO Tim Cook's impassioned plea for social justice, we haven't heard much from the company. So we don't really know how they're doing. However, like PayPal, Apple Pay is benefiting from the desire for contactless transactions at all sorts of stores. People are reluctant to hand over their credit cards or put their fingers on COVID-encrusted keypads. The House of Pay. And don't even get me started on cash. But a resurgence in the Chinese market could be phenomenal for Apple. Then there's Nike, which could be getting the boost it, it, it needs from more aggressive consumer spending in China. Hey, have you ever thought maybe that's why it's at 100? Now, I was less than thrilled to see a Nike store looted in Manhattan as you were. But China's the locus of the growth, and they've got a terrific partnership with the Chinese Ministry of Education. People who are in better shape are less likely to get extremely sick or die from COVID. Now, our country's going to yawn and do nothing about lowering obesity. America takes a blood-simple approach to these issues. Down here, you're on your own. If anything, our entire agriculture and packaged food industry seem committed to keeping everyone addicted to junk food. But I expect China to be much less cavalier about this kind of thing, and I bet Nike will play a part in that. What else? I've seen some ridiculous misinformation in the last 24 hours about Starbucks and how it lowered numbers yesterday after the close. Not true. The statements which freaked people out, knocked the stock down, came just when things were stabilizing the U.S. and picking up in China. Don't be distracted by the slowdown, alleged slowdown in our country. That was already in the numbers. There was nothing new. Instead, focus on Starbucks China. And it's now hobble competitor Luckin Coffee, a fraudulent operation whose luck has run out. 
China's strength has a lot of ramifications. It, it can put a bid under oil. Looks like it has, right? At, 30, under, at 36. It can bolster U.S. railroad traffic. All aboard! And most of all, if trade can go uninterrupted for a few months, it can provide a huge spur for many of our semiconductor uh, companies. Uh, we, we have Marvell Technologies on tonight. That thing has been a horse. And they'll explain just how much business China uh, China's given right now to the uh, 5G makers, uh, uh, 5G chip makers, including Marvell. Uh, it's not just Marvell, though. It's Skyworks. You know, that one is so good. Uh, Corvo. Qualcomm, they are roaring now that China's economy is back online. I think they all have more room to run. Maybe we can also count on some Boeing orders, some Caterpillar orders, stock acts like that way, or even General Motors. These are all laggards. They can play catch up with the rest of the world's recovery, like Dow Chemical has with the stock rally another 5% today. Dow's now up 18 points since CEO Jim Fitterling came on the show when the stock was at 22 and made an incredible call shot, said it was time to buy. Dividend safe. DuPont's a winner, too. Even with its auto exposure, as auto sales can pick up as we're finding. Yes, when you see those spectacularly strong PMI numbers from China, well, you know that someone's getting some big orders from America who does business there. Uh, whether they like it or not, it's going to be DuPont. Hey, by the way, we fret so much about Tesla's American orders. Maybe we should be focusing on the Shanghai orders, as that's where the money is going to be. Oh, and Alibaba had a tremendous quarter that you might have missed it if you were worried about U.S. legislation meant to rein in silly, money-losing Chinese companies. That's nothing to do with Alibaba, the Amazon of China, which has impeccable financials. Even after today's nearly 4% run, I am telling you, Alibaba's strong quarter still isn't reflected in the stock, especially after battles on another Chinese e-commerce play reported spectacular revenue growth last night by Alibaba. Honestly, though, as encouraging as China might be, it's Europe that I find really surprising. It's been a dog's age since we heard anything good out of Europe. But now the European Central Bank and Germany Chancellor, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel are outdoing each other, coming up with plans to stimulate the economy. UK may not be far behind them, by the way. The age of austerity in Europe is over. The Germans are always worried about inflation, legacy of Weimar. But right now, I think they're looking at us and they're more worried about unrest if they don't spend a fortune to get the European economy moving in. We have become exactly who everyone wants to avoid. Before the EU's lost decade, Europe, an economy of 800 million people, used to matter. But it's been more abundant for years. Can you imagine if it actually took off? Can you imagine? You should, because it has, which is one reason why we suddenly have a weaker dollar. So many of our companies have had to adjust their numbers down over the years because the dollar's been too strong. Now that U.S. interest rates are as low as Europe's, our country's no longer being flooded with European money, and the dollar can go down. In short, Europe has a pulse and its pulse is loud enough to impact our stock market. I cannot recall when that's been the case, maybe since 2011 when they decided to save the darn thing. All that said, I'm not trying to be a Pollyanna here. The United States is in a bad spot. We have a massive unemployment problem. Some of our hottest trends in our stock market, like the stay-at-home thesis, they look a little long in the tooth, at least for now. There's a meek rotation in the financials because there's so much debt issuance, and this week we're finally getting some equity issuance. We've had a run in auto and auto-related, but that's because of China, not United States. But the bottom line, today our market was saved by strength overseas for the first time in a long time. China and Europe bailed our stock market out. I say, who cares? I'll take it. Hey, why don't we go to Elliot in New York, please? Elliot. Jamie, how are you? I am good, Elliot. How about you? I'm doing well. I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for their nuts. I want to thank you for Fang. But on a day like today, I especially want to thank you for the COVID-19 index. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're trying to look. We were just trying to explain to people why the S&P is not reflecting what's going on. And it's because some of our companies are just built for this moment. How can I help? So I get a stock. It's trading for about a seven times P.E. while their peers are trading for two times over that. It's at a 5.8 percent yield. Per their last conference call, the company experienced a massive surge in direct to, direct to consumer e-commerce because of COVID. They're one of the top-selling brands on Amazon. Their products are sold at all the essential big box stores, CVS, Target, Lowe's, Home Depot. It plays into the do-it-yourself tie-dye and arts and crafts projects from home, hits on the current 1990s fashion trend, and let's not forget the free pump from number 23 himself, Michael Jordan, via The Last Dance. Jimmy, what do we think of this Phoenix rising from the ashes? Jimmy Chills, I'm talking about Haynes Man, HBI. Yeah, I, you know what? It is time. I've said no at 20. I said no at 15. Uh, I'm going to go with it here. 
I think you're right. I think that it's going to come back along with a lot of the other consumer air, uh, consumer errors. I like it. It's a good call. Elliot's got horse sense. Why don't we go to Brian in New Hampshire, please? Brian. Booyah, Jim, from the Granite State. Well, you bet, man. What's up? My question tonight is AstraZeneca. It has its feet wet in a potential virus vaccine, but it's got a lot more going on. And that's the good news this week with Lamparza. So my two-part question is, is it's a good time to invest more in AstraZeneca? And do you see real growth potential in the next six months to a year? I have to be impressed. Now, I think you could say, Jim, where were you last week? This thing has had a very, very big run. But it has got... It has a lot of things going for it. Just like you said, it's only got a 3% yield now, but they've done remarkable things. I cannot believe that this company has made such a comeback. How do you like that? And, you know, the pancreatic cancer, the, uh, the oncology, they did fantastic. I watched the ASCO stuff from this magazine, uh, online magazine called Stat, and I thought AstraZeneca was the most impressive thing that I saw in, in Stat's coverage of ASCO. All right, whenever we think the market's going to get clocked, what do we get? A stay of execution. Today, our market was saved by strength overseas, particularly Europe, but also China. Oh, man, tonight, I have said endlessly that there are only a handful of oils I would own. Tonight, I'm explaining why certain stocks in the group actually have captured my fancy for you. Then, demand for RVs is high at dealers across the country as Americans look for alternative ways to travel while also social distancing. I'm eyeing the bull market. I'm seeing the space. And as more people work from home, cybersecurity is more important than ever. I'm finding out how Proofpoint can help. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.